dark chocolate is one of the things that is really beneficial for helping with depression. It boosts our endorphins and our dopamine, mm -hmm. but you need the 70% or greater. So you can get the raw cacao or 100%, but you don't have to eat completely bitter chocolate to get the benefits. Well, hey, you guys, welcome back. Happy holidays. Welcome to the Dr. Crockett Show. Welcome to the kitchen with us. I know, again, this was a, supposed to be a kitchen show, like cooking show. Somehow, the Dr. Crockett Show has turned into uh, all kinds of fun, sweet things. And today, I'm super excited to welcome back our very popular and amazing guest, Sam Blumenthal. Sam, welcome back. Thank you so much for having me. It feels like home here. Oh, that's one of the nicest things you could say. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a fun place, isn't it? It's incredible. Well, you've helped make it that way. Thank you. Thank you. If you guys haven't checked out the first episode we did, it was the first kitchen show that we did actually with Sam. You should really check it out. It was the collagen episode and we were, we aired it on Halloween. We made a bone broth, which was absolutely to die for. And it's been our most popular segment of the show yet. So that's super cool. But today... We're going to be making, uh, we're kind of taking like a shift, I would say, okay. uh, because we're going towards something a little less savory, yes. more sweet. A whole lot more sweet. Uh -huh. And these are, uh, I'm really excited to make this together. We're going to be making a, uh, what's, like, what would be our official name for this? I, how about healthy holiday peppermint bark? Yes, I love it. A healthy holiday peppermint bark that's super simple, nutrient dense, and incredibly delicious. It is. I've tried I've tried some already. Uh -huh. We had to test it just to make sure it was okay before the show. Yeah. And we're doing a little bit of like a, maybe like a Food Network swap or like a cooking show swap because it does take uh, some time to kind of set in the freezer. So what's also special about this recipe is it's no bake. And I'm sure during nice. holiday times, if your family is anything like mine, you have things on the stovetop, in the oven. This is something that you can really get kind of out of the way a little bit quicker without the use of, of so many other appliances and without so many ingredients yeah and if you have kids or dogs in the way y'all can't see this but our co-stars are on set with us i have ollie right here next to me don't y'all worry you're always like where is ollie he's right here and then topher who's sam's uh, special dog is with us today too so boy so even with like kids and dogs and pets and everything going on, this is a super easy recipe to make. We wanted to emphasize just the slowing down and giving yourself grace. And we thought it would be really fun to have something that was satisfying and made you feel good and still didn't require just a tremendous amount of effort. We want you to be able to slow down and enjoy your family too. And they are going to enjoy this as well uh -huh. just make sure if you do have dogs around we are using chocolate today oh yeah so just get me a yeah you're uh you're clean with your process or maybe they're outside or in it or in a different space yeah mm -hmm. well cool sam why don't you start by telling us the rest of the ingredients beside the chocolate awesome so our ingredients today uh we're going to be using some dark chocolate uh a kind of a combination of 70% and also we'll do some sem uh, semi-sweet. Okay. The cool part about this recipe is you can truly pick whatever kind of percentage of uh, cocoa you're looking for or cacao that you're looking for. Um, but we're doing a nice combination of 70% and semi-sweet today. And we'll get into a little bit more of the health benefits in a moment. Uh, we're also going to be using some uh, Greek yogurt, uh, vanilla, peppermint. Uh, what else do we have? These are semi-sweet chocolate chips, pomegranate, pomegranate seeds, seeds, and a little bit of lem uh, orange zest we'll be using too. So perhaps these are all ingredients that you probably already have. Did you mention them? I did mention them. I'll we'll mention them again. I miss this. Super important. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be uh, using so much peppermint, chocolate, fruits, uh, proteins, uh, heart healthy fats to create something that is so flavorful, nutrient dense and delicious. I love it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how do we start? Awesome. So the first thing that you do want to get uh, started before you begin all of your cooking processes is we're going to be working on melting our chocolate in a double uh boiler yes and i have a very fancy double boiler please note so we got to the cooking segment today i realized i don't have a real double boiler so i hacked it which is what you can do too so we have a big uh stock pot that has about this much water in it the water is about up to here in the stock pot. stock pot we want it to heat up enough to create steam 
And then you can either use a metal mixing bowl or what I used is a frying pan that fits over this. Uh, you just want something that fits over the top of it so that the steam comes up from below and is actually going to melt our chocolate. So it's going to be an indirect heat so we're not actually burning the chocolate. So yeah, we want chocolate. No good. No, not good at all. We no. want to get that going before we begin our chopping process. Um, so in here we have a combination of 70% uh, dark chocolate and also our semi-sweet uh, chocolate as well. Cool. And so while you're chopping, I'm yeah. going to talk about the health benefits. We could do that. That's awesome. I love that. So uh, in our in my practice, I'm an GYN surgeon for y'all that don't know me. Um, we deal a lot with different types of uh, different types of depression, postpartum depression, PMS, PMDD, which is post premenstrual dysphoric disorder. It's basically the depression that goes along with our cycles. Uh, sometimes a uh, seasonal affective disorder, which we're going to talk a little bit more about today. So um, chocolate, in fact, dark chocolate is one of the things that is really beneficial for helping with depression. It boosts our endorphins and our dopamine, mm -hmm. but you need the 70% or greater. So you can get the raw cacao or 100%, but you don't have to eat completely bitter chocolate to get the benefits. So today we're using mostly the 70% uh, for the base bark. Yes. And I mean, that's really important because if we're not feeling satisfied by what it is that we're enjoying, it's very difficult to feel, uh, we're not feeling like emotionally satisfied. It's very difficult to feel also physically satisfied. Yeah. So we want the addition of all these health benefits from the 70% dark, um, but kind of for some, depending on your taste buds, flavor profiles, food fact food preferences, maybe just a straight up 70% dark chocolate's not really going to be your, your cup of tea, so to speak. So that's why we want to get a combination of some of the sweeter flavors too. Um, but if you're somebody who loves bitter chocolate, use 70% or greater for this yeah, one. Yeah, 96. Go for it. Uh-huh. And uh, do you, do you want me to give like the, the measurement of what we're using here today? Or is that going to be, okay, we have uh, three chocolate bars. So this was about 12 there are ounces. two ounces each, I think. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You're right. It's okay. We, we're using 12 ounces of chocolate. So each of those bars, if my math is correct, and I'm yes. mathing correctly, each of them are four ounces yep. of chocolate. Yes. Nice. So do you want to take this uh, right over here? Sure. And just, just add it right in. This has already been heating up for about 10 minutes or so. Oh, look at it. Just mm -hmm. just melting right away. That's so cool. So we're going to post the recipe on our recipe blog. You can go to drcrockett.com. That's drcrockett.com slash recipes. This is one that we are going to be linking there, and we'll put a link of that in the show notes on the podcast and the YouTube video for you as well. Well, that's melting pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So you guys are going to want to make sure you have a little towel to wipe down the condensation on the bottom of this. And then my counters are granite, so we're going to set right on it. But if you have a uh, counter that is not heat proof, you need to put a heat pad down. And we just wanted to mention that Sam was stirring this the whole time. You just want to keep it moving so that it all melts really evenly. Oh, that looks amazing. You get this nice like gloss to it. Um, this really kind of like silky smooth texture. We're going to use to pour uh, right into a little either like a like a licked baking sheet we're going to be using a baking dish today uh kind of also depending on the size of your freezer we have limited space today so we're going to yeah. keep it a little bit smaller so we actually might have some leftovers to make for another time yeah. um but just kind of keep in mind and be mindful of how much freezer space you have because as i mentioned at the start this is a no bake recipe but we do need enough time for uh, everything to get nice and settled in the freezer and so I'm going to hold it this way if you wouldn't mind just kind of. All right. So now I'm just going to guide this into the pan and it is on parchment paper, not wax paper. You want to make sure you use parchment paper. I'm going to turn it this way so y'all can see. There we go. Let me just want to smooth it. Mm -hmm. And just cover the base of it because that's going to be the base of your peppermint bark. I've never made this before. I can't believe I've never made this before. It's so simple. It's one of my favorites. Awesome. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, then we'll just spread like a nice thin um, even layer. Yeah, this pan seems about right. I think if you put it in a bigger pan, it would be a thinner bark, but it doesn't look like 
which kind of brings up a really great point. Like this recipe is really designed to focus on variety, like variety in terms of the ingredients that you want to add um, to it. We're going to get a little creative today by adding in that pomegranate seed and also zest um, some uh, clementi clementines mm -hmm. right over it. You can use oranges too. Um, but if you want to add any like pistachios, uh, oh, pistachios or any kind of like your favorite nuts, delicious, like your favorite nuts or seeds. Uh, there's so much room for variety in customizing this, not only in terms of the ingredients you add, but also uh, the the thickness of it as well. So as you mentioned, if we had like a larger pan, this would be a little bit thinner. And if that's your cup of tea, awesome. Um, but if you want something with a little bit more body and thickness, I'd, we'd recommend using like a smaller, more compact dish. Great. Just want to try to get a nice even layer. Super. And then what do we do next? We, uh, and then we're going to pop it in the freezer for 10 minutes while we start preparing all of our other ingredients that are going to go on top. Great. So now we're going to begin with our yogurt. We're going to be using a Greek yogurt today, super rich in protein. And protein is really going to help uh, with that sensation of feeling satisfied. Right. Um, and because this is Greek yogurt, too, we're going to get some great probiotics. They're going to be really great for gut health and digestion. Mm -hmm. We talk about that a lot on the show about how uh, half of our Seth, probably more than that, of our dopamine and our um, emotional well-being is being <laughs> emotional well-being <laughs> comes from gut health and the gut flora. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is perfect. Yeah, using a little natural probiotic here. And in addition to that, we have like seventy to ninety percent of our whole immune system in our gut. That's right. So by feeding it with some great gut bacteria, um, we can really take care of our gut health. So we're adding in just a little bit of a little bit of vanilla just to help sweeten this a little bit more. So this is just a plain Greek yogurt and we'll give that a nice little mix. Okay, so we added a little vanilla in just for a little bit of sweetness. Mm -hmm. So you guys know that most of the time on the show, we talk about whole food plant-based diets. This may be an exception if you're um, choosing to add some dairy products. Yogurt is great not only for the protein that you mentioned, but also for vitamin D and for calcium. And... Uh, there are plant substitutes you can do if you need. Yeah, so if you wanted to go for like a, a coconut-based yogurt, um, that is a really delicious and fulfilling choice. We're also talking about like an uh, an almond base. Oh, I love the almond I've yogurts. Never had the almond yogurts oh, before. So good, but I'm an almond freak. Like, uh -huh. have you ever had marzipan growing up? I not grow no. No? Mm -mm. Oh my gosh. So my grandparents, this is a really fun story for because I love remembering my relatives during the holidays. Mm -hmm. So I had an Oba and Opa. And I have ornaments from my Opa's Christmas tree from when he was a little boy in Germany. He immigrated to the United States. And he's actually one of the inspirations for me, my major inspiration for becoming a doctor. So he um, immigrated to the United States when he was a teenager and learned English and went through engineering school in New York. And I always thought that if he went through all of that to provide a better life for me, that I had an obligation to use my gifts to the best of my ability. So I just decided I was going to do as much as I could with what I had. And now that I do robotic surgery, I, um, I always joke that all my grandmothers were seamstresses uh -huh. and my grandfathers were engineers. And that's how I became a robotic surgeon. That's really beautiful. <laughs> I love that. That's yeah. Cool. But one of the stories he used to always tell us about was in their stockings. In uh, He lived in northern Germany almost. Well, it was Denmark back and forth. Um Oranges in the wintertime were extremely rare. And so things that we take for granted, like pomegranate, these were extraordinary treats, the figs, the dates. Mm -hmm. And so we still to this day put nuts and an orange and an apple in the bottom of our stockings for Christmas. That's so beautiful. Isn't that fun? And to just have that gentle reminder that food, again, like, yes, it is <laughs> fuel and yes, it's medicine. It's also nostalgia and love and, and joy family, yeah. and, and connection and that's such such a beautiful story isn't that fun yeah i had not even intended to bring that up today but i think it's a a, a great way to integrate what we're doing because we're maybe building some new family memories today for our generation and uh, the future generations so uh, it's nice to incorporate those things um while i'm holding this yeah. let's talk a little bit about the benefits of citrus Love it so much. So with 
uh, with citrus, there's actually some overlap between the pomegranate seeds that we're going to be using and citrus, a really rich source of vitamin C. And this is a huge callback to our previous episode together with collagen. Right. Vitamin C is really excellent for our bodies because it helps with our own internal production of collagen. collagen. And it's so pretty. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we also have the ability to use it as a great way to pair with collagen that we maybe get from supplements or even even from the bone broth that we made in order for our body to best absorb, digest, and utilize collagen. It likes to be paired they work together with vitamin C. And so today we're pairing some of like the, the bitter chocolate with a little bit more of the sweet citrus. Mm -hmm. um, but if you are looking for a source of vitamin C that's not coming from something sweet, we can also find vitamin C in dark leafy greens as well. Great. It's like uh, spinach we had for lunch today. Exactly. Uh, what else is a dark leafy green that like a... Uh, Brussels sprouts qualify? Uh, a little bit of vitamin C will have some uh, kale, kale in there too, arugula. And I mean, my favorite, if you haven't noticed, this is my favorite beet tattoo. The tops of uh, beet beet leaves are great. Tattoo. I That's do. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, those are going to be really rich in vitamin C. Okay. Top. Mm -hmm. tops. Yeah. Well, we have just a couple minutes, I think, for our chocolate that's in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. I think we have time to talk about the benefits of peppermint. Let's hear it. Okay, this has so much, y'all. I started thinking about the chocolate, of course, and you know, I could rattle all those off, but the peppermint, I really hadn't put it all together until I looked it up. I got to read it for y'all. Y'all are going to crack it, especially since I'm a gynecologist. So the benefits of peppermint, it's used for the common cold, cough, inflammation of the mouth and throat, sinus infections, and other respiratory infections. It's also used for digestive problems, including heartburn, right? Do you ever have somebody say they just needed a peppermint? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I never thought about that that much. Uh, it's used for heartburn, nausea, vomiting, morning sickness. Hello, all our pregnant patients. Um, irritable bowel syndrome, cramps of the upper gastrointestinal tract, which is stomach, bile ducts, which is your liver and your gallbladder, uh, bacterial overgrowth of the small intestine, and gas. So they're talking about abnormal bacteria overgrowth in the small intestine our um lactobacillus that's in our yogurt is replacing it with the good bacteria uh, so this the peppermint's not counteracting this it's getting rid of the ones that the lactobacillus need to um replace oh there's more though some people also use peppermint for menstrual problems preventing spasms during endoscopy procedures, fevers, headaches to reduce stomach bloating after surgery, and as a stimulant. Peppermint oil is applied to the skin for headache, muscle pain, nerve pain, toothache, inflammation of the mouth, mouth joint conditions, bad breath, menopausal symptoms, hot, <laughs> excuse me, hot flashes during treatment for breast cancer. <laughs> excuse me. Cracking up, this is hitting women's health so much. Itchiness of the skin during pregnancy, otherwise known as pups. Hives for repelling mosquitoes, for reducing plaque, and for reducing nipple discomfort during breastfeeding. I bet babies really like it too. People use peppermint oil to relax the colon. <laughs> Some people inhale it for treating symptoms of cough and colds and to reduce stress and improve mental sharpness. What I love so much about the use of peppermint for our cooking today is I I love using like peppermint cane mm -hmm. because it's very uh, like symbolic of holiday time. And if this is a recipe that you want to make when it's not the holiday time, um, even just using like peppermint leaves or like peppermint oil drops too, right. um, just to get that flavor in there or maybe even a pop of grain in this recipe, um, our intention for using the peppermint candy is to also invite in that sense of just joy and nostalgia too while getting some of the peppermint in there as well but if this is a recipe that you're looking to make uh while it's not holiday time and maybe you don't have uh or we don't have like access to our peppermint candy canes um just using like mint leaf would be excellent it'd be great too. yeah awesome okay now what do we do with those Okay, so while our chocolate is still setting, I think we just have a couple more minutes. Uh, that chocolate just needs to set for about 10. Uh, we're going to take a rolling pin and whatever aggression you've had from this holiday <laughs> season, you can really take out uh, to peppermint. on the peppermint. Are you so do this? I'm letting you do this. Yeah. That's a good time. Uh -huh. So you can like roll it out, or sometimes what I like to do is just kind of, yeah. Oh, that's very satisfying. Yeah, let's see if you guys can see this. 
Here we go. It's harder than you think. So, yeah, we're doing it in a bag to minimize enough. <laughs> a lot easier to do it this way. There's still a lot of pieces all over the place, right? A lot of powder. You want some? And sure. And with this, I like to create a little bit of variety in terms of the size of pieces oh. too. Um, so we can get like some of like the dusting that's happening, but also I, I like when some of the peppermint is full Chunky. because it gives like a nice little mouthfeel and texture. Oh, make all your holiday blues go away, right? You know. Not just the health benefits of what we're making too, it's like the therapeutic benefit of just <laughs> the whole cooking process. Um, and if you're doing this with kids, it might be just a fun thing to do, but make sure they're supervised. Yeah. <laughs> Some so yay. So there's our chilled bark. Boy, that was fast. So fast. Yeah. yeah. It you might it still might be like a little like silky to the touch, but that's totally fine because all we're doing is adding in our Greek yogurt, some of our toppings, and it's actually going to go back in the freezer for about two hours. Which um, we're going to magically speed through. Exactly. Uh, but this is what it should look like. <laughs> cool. And so when you line your parchment, I want you to put a little bit more parchment um, along the side so it's easier to pick up. Cool. Also, let me wash my hands real quick. Okay, so now we're spreading the yogurt out on the chocolate. Yeah, and this is an opportunity for you to also get as creative as you want. If you want a really thin layer, um, you just get to control the thickness or the thinness. So I like to have like a, a thicker layer of chocolate. That's my choice. <laughs> More chocolate, please. Awesome. Let's go a little bit here. So it, this is going to freeze, and that's what's going to make the yogurt hard. But mm -hmm. this isn't something that you want to put in somebody's Christmas stocking because now nah, you're going to have a lot to clean up. It'll melt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the kind of the caveat of this is you need to serve it straight from the freezer so that it stays hard because it'll melt when it stays out, and it will store up to two weeks between parchment paper in the freezer. Although mine is not expected to last more than about two hours, I think mm -hmm. two minutes. There's no way it's lasting two weeks. I must be honest. Let's be real. <laughs> so, while you do the honors. This is so good. Yeah, we'll go ahead and just sprinkle that on top. Okay, here goes our peppermint. Oh my goodness, that's so beautiful. It smells so good. Starting clearing up my senses. Okay, we'll get a little bit of our chocolate chips. Lovely. So these are the semi-sweet, mm -hmm. the little mini mm -hmm. morsels. They're so cute. Yeah. You can also do cacao nibs, too, if you want more magnesium. Um, oh, I, thought, I forgot about magnesium and then mm -hmm. chocolate, right? Really great for heart health and blood flow and muscle cramping as well. That's why we like it around the PMS time, right? 100%. Mm -hmm. And if you want to help me, if I'm going to get my hands red, you're going to get your ass <laughs> red. Okay. <laughs> oh, so we can gosh. some of these pomegranate the seeds, too. The red is so... Festive. I haven't used pomegranates in my holiday cooking before very much. Um, well, we can also add to this beautiful dish for a little bit more of a pop of color to get kind of the red and green vibe going um, is some mint leaves. But I don't know if we have mint leaves today. I have mint. I, I have some. You do? Yes. I just happen to have some. And I really hadn't planned it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, look. This wow. was uh, set up from our uh, lunch. Incredible. Oh, yeah, that pretty? Yeah, so... I was going to use it for our tea, and then we ended up having pomegranate juice instead. Amazing. Look at this. We have a pop of green, so much mint. Oh, it smells so freshness. good. Freshness. Oh, you're tearing them up. I'm making... <sighs> My pieces are too big. All right. So... This is going to go in the refrigerator for two hours. You're so much better than I am at this. Well, what I love so much about kind of this like teamwork process today is that we have an opportunity to infuse our energy into what we're making. And if we are coming into the kitchen and if y'all are, are watching this and want to create this or any kind of recipe that you're making at home, whatever energy you're bringing forth to this space will go directly into what you are creating. I love that. 
And if you taught me that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and if it's like that cheery kind of positive, exciting energy, like that's going straight into the dish, though, in, in my personal experience, sometimes the holiday time can be a little stressful and sometimes that inner light yeah feels like a touched in a little dim so like holiday blues or if you're like me i suffer from seasonal affective disorder or sad sad that's something that uh is due to the shorter days during the winter months and i've had it since a kid i always kind of get the funk i am very dependent on the sunlight Mm -hmm. so we talk about in our medical practice about Uh, things that we can naturally do to help prevent depression or blues or and of course if you're really suffering from depression please go see your doctor and you know there are medications that are available that are wonderful but we're going to talk a little bit about just some natural things so chocolate for sure Mm -hmm. Uh, the orange we talked about so citrus is helpful Mm -hmm. sunlight so if you live in a place where you don't get much sunlight uh, try to get out first thing in the morning and get at least 10 minutes of sunlight when the sun is coming up. If you can't, there are sunlight lamps that you can buy. And I find those helpful because it helps extend the exposure of the sunlight into your eyes. Uh, exercise is great. Uh, sex, if you're able to have some, uh, you know, mm-hmm. great. So those things all increase your dopamine and help with depression. So in lieu of not having a sexual partner right now because I'm single, I'm going to have some peppermint bark. I'm going to have a lot of peppermint bark. <laughs> um, so with that too, like as you're creating your uh, recipe, if you notice, you know, that what might feel like a negative energy, mm-hmm. rather than using this as a way to absorb that negative energy, how can we reframe that? Right. How can we transform or recreate something that might feel negative when the sun's out, when the sun's not out, um, et cetera, into something fulfilling and enriching and energizing? And so whatever energy you bring into the space, into the kitchen, know that that is welcome. It requires that moment to create a pause and say, okay, what's showing up for me? Is this something I want to transfer or maybe this is something I want to transform? I love that idea. So uh, we're transforming uh, the dark days of winter and the holiday blues that come after everybody's gone and all the packages are opened into something joyful and beautiful that we're full of gratitude for. I love it. Um, We added a little bit of salt, too, to kind of offset some of the bitterness and bring out a little bit more sweetness. And we're going to pop this in the freezer for two full hours. Two hours. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Whoa. Oh, two hours later. Two hours later. Oh, my goodness. This is magic. And a different sheet. <laughs> it looks so pretty. And it doesn't have green on it. <laughs> so we're going to add a little bit of our mint. Does now this I- one have salt on it? Yes. Okay. We're also going to get a little bit of orange zest, too, or clementine zest. Just to get a little bit more pop of color. Get all the colors. It should smell so good. Oh, oh flavors meld so nicely. Mm-hmm. I think the point that you were making earlier about how the vitamin C and the magnesium, all the things that we eat, work together to help increase our collagen and our health is super important. Mm-hmm. Because especially in and the way we think in Western culture, we think one thing that we take does one thing. Like you take an antibiotic, it makes the bacteria go away. But when it comes to our food and our body's chemistry, it's a whole lot more complicated than that. And things are additive. So that's the other thing I really like about this recipe. It's all sorts of goodness in here. Oh, that's pretty. Cool. Yay. Okay. Ready, ready to break uh Break a piece. Not have a little bit. Yeah, sure. I need to try some. Amazing. Incredible. You are amazing. Thank you so much for being a guest on the show. And uh, let's try a piece. So, yeah, when you're ready to break it, um, honestly, it's just like a... It's helpful when you have the uh, parchment paper that's sticking up. On the edge. On the edge. Or do you need a knife? Yeah, I have one right here, actually. Perfect. Just like this. So this is kind of the consistency we're looking for. And then I love seeing that layer too. 
Lovely. Break. Break. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers. Happy holidays, you guys. I hope you have a safe and happy holidays. And may all your wishes come through. And we will see you next episode, which is actually um, mocktails. We're, we're doing uh, alcohol-free, really amazing drinks next week. Delicious. Just in time for New Year's. So and join us for the ne- next episode. Thank you for being here. Bye, all. y'all. Bye. All right. And it's all bad. Oh, can we do this every week? Mm-hmm.